Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the other day I came across this, a device long neglected since about 2010. This is the DataWind Pocket Surfer 2 and it's essentially a handheld laptop. Think an old school GPD Win, except this is and always was terrible. I first bought one of these in 2008 after selling enough sweets to my friends in the school playground, but what exactly is it? Well late last decade the whole smartphone concept was still a fairly new one, with the iPhone 3G dominating the market. Like all top end phones of the time though, contracts were expensive. This however was not. For about £150 you got a device that came with free internet for a year, and from what I remember 25 gigs of online storage. After that first year you could buy more data and prices were still pretty reasonable. I never made it past the first year though to find out what the exact costs were. Unlike the iPhone, this device used only GPRS to get online which made it terrifically slow. I think 114 kilobits per second was the maximum download speed, and so web pages certainly took their time to load, and once they had, well you'd find that they'd probably end up looking like this, due to the 5 inch 640x240 VGA screen, which displayed pictures with 16 colours. Despite the speed, using it actually feels okay. The Motorola Razor style full QWERTY keyboard works well with responsive clicks, and it's not too heavy, plus the little built in mouse here works better than it looks. But aesthetics can only take a device so far. Battery life was also below average. I remember getting a few hours out of it, but that was certainly enough for me. Not just because of performance, but because mine always made this strange and annoying buzzing noise. Click a button, get a noise. Navigate the web page, get a noise. Throw the device down the stairs, get a few noises. But let's talk about the positives. It was definitely handy for checking emails on the go and downloading PDF documents. A few of its primarily businessman focused features admittedly went over my teenage head at the time. I just wanted to use it for browsing and stuff. Still, if I got frustrated then I imagine an on the go business executive would be too. Hold on a minute Alan, I'll have those spreadsheets ready in 7 to 13 seconds. Oh, and would you mind looking at them on this tiny dark and dismal screen? This device also lacks the ability to play video, so YouTube is out the window. It has no speakers anyway, or a port for headphones. This was a device designed with few purposes in mind, and it didn't even handle them very well. So. What can one of these do today and should you buy one? Well, let me stop any of you eager beavers right there because next to nothing is the answer. Don't get me wrong, it will still turn on and buzz and then promptly switch off again if you've got a battery life like mine, but the bigger problem is that I can't seem to get it to connect anymore. I can't find any info online either about buying more data and the device detects no GPRS signal in the first place. So maybe the servers that it used to connect to have been shut down. I think that once the usage expired you had to get it reset and pay for more data that way, but I can't seem to find any service anywhere to make this possible, and even if I could, well, I probably wouldn't want to. So why did this product fail, and why would I consider it a tech fail, aside from all of the reasons I've just stated? Well, let's not forget just how successful the iPhone turned out to be, along with other Android based smartphones and tablets. Now this launched at a time when all of this was relatively new, but as we know now, the internet isn't just a desktop based affair anymore, much like it was back in 2007, when aside from the aforementioned iPhone, there were limited devices in the way of portable technology. Unless of course you wanted to buy a laptop, which would have been quite significant in size and not as easy to carry around as something like the Pocket Surfer 2 which I think turned out as well to be a little bit of a gimmick. See, it was a good idea in practice, a smaller device that could be carried with you everywhere in your pocket, but I think the place for it on the market quickly disappeared soon after the launch, if there was even a place for such a device anyway. There's a fine line between products that are considered gimmicks and ones that are destined to catch on, and I think it's safe to say which category this goes into. So there we have it, I hope you've enjoyed this look back at a little bit of a tech fail or blast from the past. I'm going to blast mine into the bin now. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you ever had one of these devices and how you coped with it in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.